Prior to this video, I've gone ahead and created a new project via React Native Init and just call it Formic Yep Forms. And the first thing we'll need to do is actually say yarn add Formic, or you could use NPM if that's your preference. And then once you've installed that, we can go ahead and start working on it. I'll be doing all my work in app.js by running React Native Init or using Expo React Native uh, or create React Native app. Regardless, you should have an app.js um, to do all of your work in. So what we'll want to do is first import React. We're also going to import a safe area view, a text input, button, and then finally an activity indicator from React Native. We'll also need to import the Formic library from Formic. And then we can go ahead and create a component. We'll export default that. So we can go ahead and start writing this. First, we'll just go ahead and use a safe area view to wrap our entire application in, uh, just so it kind of isn't hidden behind that notch that's becoming ever so popular. Okay, with that done, first thing we'll do is basically wrap our entire form in a formic component. And the child to the formic component, rather than being another set of components, you know, views, whatever it may be, it's actually going to be a function. Um, it's kind of following this render prop pattern. And there's different ways to use formic uh, at this point in time, kind of using this render prop as the default go-to way. But that's, so that, that's how we're going to be using it. And then basically this function is going to take one argument and that's going to be a variety of props. Uh, that formic passes you to actually manage the state of your form. So once we're inside of here, we're going to use a react.fragment uh, to wrap all of our elements, which are going to be a text input and a button. We'll give the button a title and we'll just call this submit. Let's make sure everything works. Okay, we've got our button, our text input somewhere in here. We'll need to add styles to that. So the way you actually work with formic is entirely via uh, props that you pass to this formic component. So for example, you'll pass initial values to initialize values uh, to work with. So let's say we'll pass a name as an empty string. When you want to submit it, you're going to use the on submit prop, and then you can go ahead and pass a function to this, and we'll just do everything in line here. So on submit, the first argument is going to be whatever the values are. So we can go ahead and say alert, uh, I'm going to say json.stringify the values just so that they actually show up in the alert. But when I save this and I press submit, nothing's happening because we don't, we haven't told Formic how, when to actually submit this. And that's something that's going to come to us from Formic prop. So we can say uh, on press of our button, we'll go ahead and say Formic props dot handle submit. So now when we press submit, it'll go ahead and do that. And we see our values uh, showing up there. So to actually update this value, what we're going to do is down on our text input. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is add some styles to this just so that we can actually see it. I'll set a border width of one, border color, black. Uh, we'll give it a padding 10 and then a margin bottom of three. Okay, so we can kind of see what this is looking like. So if I type in here, it's not actually doing anything because we need to go ahead and hook this all up. And to do this, we're just going to use typical props that a text input would have. So we can go ahead and say on change text. We'll go ahead and say formic props dot handle change. So that's just kind of uh, base. So formic works whether you're on React Native, React anywhere. And we can go ahead and use this handle change to go ahead and update that value uh, without really having to uh, think about the platform. This is just the way that we do it in React Native. Uh, so we can say formic props dot handle change, and then we want to go ahead and pass the key of whatever value we want to update. So aligning with what's in initial values and aligning with in the future what's in our validation, that's what this key or this argument to handle change is going to be. So we can go ahead and say name. Now when I update this, we can see we've actually got uh, this prop showing up, rather this data showing up. Now in addition to this, you can actually go ahead and uh, work with, you know, detecting and showing when the form is being submitted. And this is very valuable when, say, for a sign-in form, which we'll do later on, or sign-up form. Uh, you're going to have to talk to the server. You want to show the user that you've actually submitted that. 
and formic that's something else that it'll manage inside of its internal state. So again, just like we've got this formic props .handle submit, what we can do is say formic props dot is submitting, which will be set to true when handle submit is called. Uh, if that's true, we'll go ahead and just render the activity indicator. Otherwise, we'll actually render the button. So now when I press submit, we can see we've actually got this activity indicator showing up. Uh, now, obviously, you don't want to always show that. So regardless of whether you get a response back or an error back, as a second argument to our onSubmit function, we actually get a series of actions that uh, kind of allow us to change the internal state of the formic form. So once we do this, we can actually say actions.setSubmitting to false. can save this. And now when we submit it, let's go ahead and wrap this in a set timeout. And we'll say after 1,000 seconds, we'll go ahead and do that, just simulating some network latency. So now when we update our name, we can see it showing up. And then the submit button does come back once our submission uh, is complete. So that's kind of the basics of just working with Formic itself and how you can actually start updating data, storing data, and then working with the various different states of a Formic form.